For some reason, man, a lot of people like the way Portra 400 looks overexposed. Out of curiosity, I just wanted to try it out. All right, you guys, so I'm waiting right now by the pier and it's 4.54. I had a portrait session booked for 4.45, so. Where you been? Okay. All right, so Jordan and then Gabe just pulled up right now. I need to get my camera gear out of the car really quick before we start. Uh, but before we start real quick, let me just show you guys what we're gonna be shooting with today. Got a roll of Portra 400 and also some Fuji 400H and I got 160 packed in the bag just in case if I needed it. What's good with you? That was it bro. You I brought my camera too. You did? Yeah. What? Yeah. Let's get it. Is it heavy? Hella heavy. <laughs> legit though. It is legit. Yeah. <laughs> I got hella shoes. If you haven't watched the food review videos, check it out, Georgian, J-O-R-J-J-E-N. Subscribe to the channel. All right, let's do this. How's the battery? It's good. Right, <laughs> and I got the real fur on there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm shooting Portra 400, but we're gonna shoot this at 200 ISO instead. Be done for. We're now 15 minutes in the golden hour, and one of my main goals for this shoot was to see if we could get that dreamy look people often rave about when overexposing Portra 400. Personally, I've never been a huge fan of this look, but I still wanted to try it out and see what would happen when shot at 200 ISO. So about halfway through, this lady kindly offered us her dog for a picture, of course, and Jordan and I being animal lovers, we just went on with the flow. So here's a portrait of Jordan with a random dog. Shout out to the dog man. His name is Rex. And also thank you to the very kind lady who lended us her dog for a photograph. Cameras, they energy see. everywhere! Come on now, you know the vibes. <laughs> By the name of our chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> Unlock the character. Oh, subscribe. Yeah. You gotta you subscribe. You got to subscribe to Unlock bro. the character. Subscribe He's to the channel. He's on Titan. Okay. The next test was to photograph backlit. And generally, the common problem here is that you need to compensate your subject with overexposure. One way of doing that, of course, is to get a light meter reading off of their skin and expose for their skin tone. If you don't, you run the risk of exposing for the entire scene, which may possibly underexpose your model. But since we were already shooting overexposed to stop, I wanted to see how it would handle backlight. Like 
Alright, so we just wrapped up the film. Okay, so here are my final thoughts on overexposing Portra 400. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, the results kind of surprised me. And the first thing that I really noticed was just the way it rendered color. It rendered color a little bit differently. I don't know if you want to call it pastel or, you know, anything of that nature, but I think, here, let me just pull up a couple of photographs. Personally, I think they look a little bit less saturated and a little bit softer on color. And that's something that I actually really like in portraits, you know, not having uh, super, super bright kind of colors distracting away from the subject. Now, I should mention most C41 color films when overexposed give you that kind of pastel look and Fuji Superior being my absolute favorite. But with Portra, it definitely renders color a little bit differently than shooting it at box speed. Now, indirect sunlight, surprisingly, man, it handled it pretty well. And I thought that, you know, overexposing Portra in a situation like that would be kind of overkill. But if you look at the photograph here in Jordan's face, half of his face, because it was in direct sunlight, was a little bit underexposed. But because it was already overexposed, we have a little kind of insurance policy, a little barrier for us to make error. And that right there is probably one of the main benefits of overexposing Portra, the fact that you have that insurance policy in a way, uh, you know, if you miss exposure or if you don't meter for the shadows, you're still getting a little bit of overexposure in the shadow area. And with that said, if you look at like the backlit photograph, that really just shows how great this film's latitude is because I metered for the sunlight in the background and just off of the overexposure, uh, we got Jordan's face and his entire body uh, kind of, you know, in relatively good exposure in good light. Now, in terms of the dreamy look, I'm not 100% bought into it yet. But I will admit, man, that this definitely has a unique look to it. And if this is something that you like, I would highly recommend you guys try it, man. It's not gonna hurt anybody to sh overexpose some Portra. But overall, I'm surprised with the results. I like them. Uh, I won't be doing this all the time, but you know, when I kinda wanna have that overexposed, dreamy look, then maybe, maybe just maybe. Let me know what you guys think about the look of this film overexposed down in the comment section below. I'm curious to hear what your guys' thoughts are or if you guys have any other tips on metering or just overexposing Portrait 400 in general. But that's gonna wrap it up, man. Thank you guys for tuning in to another King James video. And as always, middle to gang. All right, so that's the wrap for the shoot. Shout yourself out again real quick, Jordan. Go ahead and check out the channel at Jordan, J-O-R-J-J-E-M. Again, J-O-R-J-J-E-M. Check out the YouTube channel, subscribe, and show love.